What's up, guys? Welcome back. Um, the a the AP polls. I mean, excuse me. The uh, college football playoff committee. They've gone and done it again, haven't they? They have dropping Cincinnati to number nine now. Number nine. All right. That's a one spot drop from in the college football playoff rankings. In the APs, in the AP poll and the coaches poll, they're still ranked six. So basically, the college football playoff committee has just been like, we, we literally don't care what you do, you're not getting in. You're you're just not. In other news, though, we have uh, whoa, did you guys see that? It's almost like that uh, LSU Gator game, huh? Where a three-win LSU team beats one of the top ten teams, a team that now has. Two losses, keep in mind, yet the committee has only dropped them one spot. One. So the Florida Gators, who just lost to a team who lost to Missouri, is now only one spot lower than they were. This is incredible. I don't know what this committee is doing. They're literally just forcing a narrative that doesn't want that no one wants to happen. Nobody wants Ohio State in. Like, literally any other team besides Ohio State, they've played five games. Is that enough? Alabama has played twice as many as that. And they're going to play each other in the college football playoff? Doesn't make sense. They dropped the Gators a single spot because they lost to LSU. Meanwhile, you have a team like Miami, who loses to a top 25 team, keep in mind, and they are dropped eight. Eight spots. After losing to a team... That has three losses, yes, okay. But at least they have eight wins. Eight. Of course, one of those losses did come to FSU. Quite sad that, uh, you know, you lose to a team like FSU. They are pretty bad, aren't they? Um, But yeah, it, the, the committee has just taken any team that's not in a Power 5 conference and they've just said, no, you're not going to make the playoff. You are literally and utterly out. No matter what you do, you are not going to get in, and we don't really care, because they, you would think that the committee, this is like a year like this, when there's, any team has a chance, basically, it's been a terrible year, there are not that many good teams, there are not even that many good players with all the opt-outs and COVID list and all that stuff, okay, so they literally just said, no matter what you do, Cincinnati, Coastal Carolina, all these teams, like, they just said, no, you're not going to get in. Honestly, you could see if USC beats Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game, Oregon could, like, skyrocket to sixth, especially if Iowa State loses. Speaking of which, Iowa State is now ranked sixth in the in the college football playoff rankings. Sixth. A two-loss team. It doesn't make any sense. Like, literally, if Oklahoma beats Iowa State, they have a pretty high shot of making it into the college football playoff, especially if Ohio State loses. It almost criminal what they're doing and you think back to like say the bcs right it wasn't the most perfect system like it's one system that operates on a computer plays out four trillion different scenarios of what could happen honestly i could see quite a few with it being especially if notre dame loses in championship weekend to clemson it could be alabama cincinnati the bcs would be like nope if one lost cincinnati's number two 100% that they beat Tulsa. <laughs> That's just the way it would be. But doesn't that sound like a lot more entertaining of a game than watching the same four teams play every single year? It's like the committee, the, the college football in general, the NCAA said, okay, we'll make the playoff for you. Now it's more fair. It's really not more fair because they still just put the same teams in the same spots. And you look at the semifinals every year, there's always a team that gets blown out by like three touchdowns every single time. So really there, there's no difference. And if you keep expanding, say you make it to eight teams, say you make it to ten teams, whatever, you want to keep going and keep going, I can guarantee that like maybe one team that's not in the Power 5 conference will be in there. Maybe one. Maybe. Like it would just be like 90% SEC, throw in a few, maybe two ACC, a big, the Big Ten champion and the Big 12 champion. And the rest would be just SEC filled up. Literally, that's how it would be. So no matter what you do, the committee is going to find a way to – like flub out any team they don't find reputable regardless of record just because it's not marketable it's all about filling their pockets up 
and trying to play off of it. Like this co- this season of college football has been an absolute bust. They don't even know like the Heisman candidates com- this year compared to the last three. They're, it's not even ideal. I mean, you have Mac Mac Jones, Kyle Trask kind of just blew his opportunity to for the Heisman with that loss to LSU. Then you have uh, Deontay Smith or Devontae Smith, sorry. It, like it's. It doesn't make any sense. It, this year is just so bad in terms of players. Like, Trevor Lawrence clearly is the best player, but the fact that he's missed so much time, you really can't have get a run out for the Heisman. And it's it's sad because it's just such a bad year for college football. And if the committee wanted to make things interesting, they could have thrown a Cincinnati in the top four. At least then, even if they get blown out, it would shut up everyone for trying to get one of these teams like Cincinnati in there. But... It's, imagine if Cincinnati were to beat Alabama. Like, if they were ranked four, Alabama was ranked one. If Cincinnati actually won, it'd be, like, the biggest middle finger to the committee of all time. So, I mean, guys, once again, I, it's just... It's honestly kind of insane how all this has transpired this year. Like, usually college football is 10 to 15 times more entertaining than the NFL. And this year, it, the NFL is just... Even with no fans in the stadium, in half the stadiums, or limited capacity. The NFL is miles ahead of college football this year just because there's no one who stands out. I feel like whoever Bama's going to play, they're just going to run over and crush them. Like, I think the spread versus the uh, versus UF in the SEC championship game is like 17.5 points. Like, is that going to be entertaining? No. Florida's defense is terrible. They just lost to LSU. Bama's clearly the title contender. Clemson already has a 10.5 point spread versus Notre Dame in the ACC championship game. And it's it's just going to be a blowout of blowouts. I, it's going to be Clemson. It's going to be Alabama. You're going to have that as a national championship game. I, I think it, when, if Ohio State, when they beat Northwestern, which is, if Northwestern pulls off this upset, that would be spectacular. Because, again, that would be a big middle finger to the committee. They'd just be like, what do we do at this point? We don't really want to put Texas A&M in there. And if I, Iowa State, if they do beat Oklahoma, I don't like what are they going to do? I know they have two losses. They'll probably just keep Ohio State in if they win. But if Iowa State were to beat Oklahoma, they already ranked them at sixth. It would be their second win versus Oklahoma this year. I mean, you have way too much going on. And there's just not enough enjoyment from this. <laughs> this year has been such a bust. It's it's devastating, man. Because compared to comparative to last year, which was one of the most exciting college football years of all time, you you had so you had arguably one of the best college football teams of all time in LSU go up and just dominate the field after coming out of nothing. <laughs> like I think Joe Burrow's last loss for LSU was that it was a Texas A and M with the seven overtime game, and then ever since then he was on a roll on a tangent to beat everyone. And then this year you come out and it's just the missed games, the canceled games, rescheduling. And then you have all these teams who are not typically an undefeated top five teams who could be. And the committee says, no, we don't care. We're going to put Ohio State in. We're going to put Clemson in with the loss. We don't care if Notre Dame loses the championship game. We're still going to put them in there. It's just it's just one of those years, man. It's not, it's not ideal. You... Like you, you can go back to the BCS. It might be better this year. You can make extend the play. Like this year of all years, you could extend the playoff. It would be so much more entertaining. But the committee again would find a way to just screw it all over. So what what is the trajectory for college football? What are they gonna do? Well, after this year, you look at all the programs. They don't have a lot of money. They're not making the revenue they normally make. Recruiting classes just came out, and, and Bama's number one. Auburn, who just fired Gus Malzahn. He had the four, like Auburn themselves, they had the 40th overall ranked class. To put that in perspective, Rutgers is 41. FSU is 31. I think Mississippi State is like 36, somewhere around there. So Auburn is, I think they're the worst in the SEC in terms of recruiting class, which is just abysmal for a program like Auburn. It might have, it might have come down because they fired him right before signing day for, in recruiting. Uh, Gus Malzahn, I mean. That might have had a factor in their recruiting class being so terrible. I think they only had about 13 recruits total. It's mind-boggling. But, I mean, you look at what, like, Gus Malzahn, I, he's he's not a bad coach. Who are you going to replace him with? Who's better than Gus? 
He's playing in the toughest conference in football. I, I, mean, I can't think of someone who's going to be more reputable than him. Um, yeah, so I think Ohio State was the second-ranked class. Michigan got one of the best uh, pocket-passing QBs or pro-style QBs in the, uh, from the recruiting class. I think he's like number two in terms of uh, pro-style, which isn't bad. I don't know. I feel like they're still going to get murked by Ohio State next year regardless. Like Harbaugh's got one more year to get it all together or he's gone. Um, yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot going on in college football. And in the future, you, I could see them extending the playoff just to make some more, have a few more games towards the end of the season, make it a little more exciting. But they're just going to plug in a bunch of big-name teams to see who can battle it out. And there might be an upset or two, but in college football, even if there's injuries involved and stuff like that, you still have, especially the top teams, have so much recruiting depth because they can they can have a missing corner, a missing safety, a missing linebacker, lineman, because they have another guy to fill the spot who's going to take him next take it next year anyways. So I mean, I don't even if they do make the extend the playoff, it's just it's not going to be any different than it is right now. You're going to have the same top teams, and if Maybe you'll have a surprise from a big team in a big conference, but you're not going to have any of these teams that are sitting out in the MAC and the Sun Belt and the American Conference, Mountain West, stuff like that. You're not going to see them. It's they're just the committee refuses to put them in, and it's honestly devastating. Well, that's all I have to say today, boys. But uh, I mean, I'm looking, I'm hoping next year is just a little bit better than this one. <laughs>